Many achievements of Muslim civilizations in Central Asia are still relatively unfamiliar. Surviving monuments are rare because of the tumultuous history of these vast territories. The eastward spread of Islam came to a halt at the borders of the Chinese Empire in the 8th century. In Central Asia, we can distinguish between five different areas. Southwest and Western Iran, which underheld contact with Mesopotamia and Kurdish tribes. Northwestern Iran, today's Azerbaijan, with links to Armenia and Georgia, who were culturally linked to Byzantium. The mountainous Northern Iranian region, Khorasan and Transoxania, today's northeast Iran, northwest Afghanistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan along the Silk Road routes, and Sistan, southern Afghanistan and western Pakistan, and Afghanistan, whose roads brought Buddhism to China. These regions were all converted by a small number of Arabs, mostly military men, who settled in major frontier cities. These outposts were occupied by Ghazi, warriors typical for their frontier character. These warriors were set up in ribats, or fortified headquarters, in the border region. Soon they were followed by merchants, which helped the spread of the new religion along. The adoption of Islam paralleled the development of the new Persian language, which can be seen as an indicator of cultural unity that reflects its results in architecture. During the 9th century, the Abbasid grip on power in Baghdad loosened and was gradually replaced by Tahirid Arabs, Iranian Samanids, Safarids of the Sistan, and later the Buyids of Iran. These vast territories contained few cities, most of which were located along trade routes in northern regions such as Ray, Khorasan, Nishapur, Herat, Balkh, and Merv. Along the frontiers of Transoxania, the heartland of Sojigan rule, were Bukhara and Samarkand. In addition to the influx of Muslim Arab warriors and traders, Turkic peoples from the east made their way to Central Asia, first in their role as slaves and soldiers, but later they coalesced into shifting tribal groups such as the Seljuks. What remains of the ruins of Merv is a monument called Sultan Kala, which reaches back to the 8th century. In February 748, Abbasid Abu Muslim established his dynasty in Merv after defeating the Umayyad Caliphate. He created a suburb near the ancient fortified city of Merv alongside a canal. Most notable are the corrugated walls of this structure, which was probably used as elite rural residences. The Piri Alamdar Mausoleum in Damgan contains the remains of Muhammad bin Ibrahim, who was the father of a governor of the Kumis province around the year 1000. It is a 13 meter high tower, which was completed in 1026. Most notable is the Iwan and the stucco decorations. Its low hemispherical dome distinguishes it from other contemporary tombs, which are mostly crowned with conical domes. Also absent is a crypt. The dominant principle here in the realm of exterior decoration is Hazar Bof, a technique where bricks are used to create geometric patterns over the surface of a wall, sometimes spelling out sacred names, pious phrases, or creating appealing patterns. Rows of bricks are set deep inside the face of the building and raised above it to create positive and negative spaces. 
The glaring light and moving sun often cast shadows over the surface of the building, creating hypnotic effects. On the side of the Tariq Khane Mosque in Damgan are traces of a square minaret, which is lost now. After it collapsed, a new round minaret was constructed in 1026. Unlike the more austere mosque, the builders used rich geometric patterns, which get increasingly more perforated the higher the tower ascends into the sky. Passages from the Quran are still readable in Hazar Baf technique. The fact that religious laws of Orthodox Sunni Islam prohibit the construction of mausoleums stresses the significance of this Samanid structure, which is the sole architectural survivor from this dynasty. The Samanid dynasty ruled the area of Khorasan and Transoxania from 819 to 999. The greatest extent of this empire included parts of Afghanistan, Iran, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, parts of Kazakhstan and Pakistan. During Samanid rule, a level of philosophical abstraction entered architecture in a highly aesthetic way. This small-scale mausoleum in Bukhara, Uzbekistan, finished in 907, which holds the remains of the founder of the Samanid dynasty, Ismail, and some of his closest family members is the basic shape of a cube, drenched in light, crowned by a hemispherical cap, a symbol of the infinite universe. Though of modest proportions, the monument is of strikingly serene geometry, breathing limpid buoyancy and simplicity, bright and vibrant in its chromatic weft and weave pattern, uncluttered yet uniform, it makes a noble statement of eternity. Before the Arab conquest, there was a Zoroastrian temple and then a bazaar on the site of the Magoki Atari Mosque in Bukhara, Uzbekistan. The word Atar means spice or perfume, a reference to the long vanished market site nearby. The structure is notable for being one of the oldest surviving mosques in Bukhara from the time before the Mongol invasion. As the structure presents itself now, the oldest portions date back to the 12th century when the Karakhanids, a Turkic dynasty, reigned Bukhara. The imaginative brickwork technique resulted in a lavish and detailed facade. The colored and glazed bricks were bound together with mortar whose diverse shades of yellow and pink added effects of color and line, emphasized by the use of turquoise glass and calligraphy. Now builders introduce majolica in shades of blue. Majolica is tin glazed earthenware resulting in durable color schemes, especially the blue color was destined to enjoy a glorious future in the decorating schemes of other Central Asian sites. The Kalyan Minaret is part of the Poi Kalyan Mosque complex in Bukhara, Uzbekistan. Rising to about 50 meters in height, the minaret, designed by Bako, was built by the Karakhanid ruler Muhammad Arslan Khan in 1127 who explicitly wanted to possess the tallest minaret in the world. The massive barrel strikes out from a low polygonal base before tapering gently upwards. Higher up, after a strip in a star pattern in marked relief, it flanges out into a sturdy system of projecting mukarnas, on which a vertical loja rests. This topping rotunda is equipped with 16 arched fenestrations. A spiral brick staircase twists inside to the rotunda. According to legend, the master builder laid the foundation with a mixture of camel's milk and bull's blood. He returned two years later 
when the foundation had become durable and proceeded with the brickwork. Yet, he died a disappointed man shortly after the minaret's completion, complaining that, quote, my imagination soared higher than the minaret I built, end of quote. About a hundred years after its construction, the tower so impressed Genghis Khan that he ordered it to be spared during the destruction of the town. <laughs>